hi, this is Cindy Gunter Baldo, and I am doing this bonus video for my Llamas Love Lettering channel. Um, I have decided that with all of the lettering tutorials that I have given and all the ones I'm going to continue to give, I wanted, i uh, got to straighten my ring out so it's obvious here, I thought I'd take a few minutes to explain how I choose what lettering I choose for my planner. Like, how, how, how do I do that in there? How do I decide what I want to do? So, I'm going to start by showing you, again, what I use. Like, in some of my previous planner spreads, I've used different colors, but I don't remember when it was. It's when I'm on vacation, I don't plan as much. I don't remember when it was, but there was somewhere in here. Oops, didn't do that week. Not where I decided that black is my favorite. So I've been doing this Black Pilot G2 in my planner. And you can see in some of my layouts, like, I use lettering in certain areas. Like here, here, this here. You know, you can see, look in here, you can see in different spots. I like to use... Llamas love lettering. I'm not really looking at my camera, so I don't know what you can see right now. Anyway, I wanted to kind of give you some of my, like, my thought process as to when I use lettering. Okay? Generally speaking, if I'm going to use really fancy schmancy lettering, I'm going to do it in a section that's going to be the most of the section. Like here with mom and RJ time, it was a day that I spent um, time. Oh, my ring does not want to stay in shot. I'm trying to keep it here for you guys. Mom and RJ time was a day that I spent, um, just my son and I, I think we got ice cream. I don't remember what else. My daughter was on outdoor ed, so she was gone and my husband was working. So I got to spend some time with my son one-on-one. -on -one. Doesn't happen very often. You know, here I used hang out with my guys, my husband and my son on the last night before my daughter got back from outdoor ed. Um, date night's one that I often use fancy lettering because it usually does take up that block. I try not to plan anything else for that time frame so that I can use the fancy lettering to really emphasize that don't plan anything for this time or your my husband's going to kick my ass. So not really though. He wouldn't actually beat me up. Just a disclaimer. So like there's an example of date night and there's an example of date night that's actually tonight after I'm done filming. Film bonus. Ooh. Anyway, um, so date night's another one that I use a lot. Another one that I use is family time. Because again, it's another thing where I want to try and keep the um, the block of time free for, for whatever it is we just like a family. This night we watched Once Upon a Time. A lot of the time it's where's another good one there's this last week i think we watched um mocking jay that night my kids love the hunger games movies you know but anyway so in general so that's how i decide to fill up a block with lettering another way i like to use lettering and there's a lot of good examples on this current week that we're in is when i have something i want to write into an area on my planner but i maybe want to emphasize it a little bit so I can remember it better. Like the way some people use bright stickers, I use fancy lettering because it draws my eye. So for here, start 21 day fix. Had to remind myself of that. Or here, closing round two of the pens that I did today. I had to remind myself to do that too. And receipt, that's actually something for school. I had to bring a receipt to get reimbursed for a chunk of money that I had to spend for my kid's school. Um, or here, go to the post office, check with my pen pimp. I have to write that on. So I'm going to do that tomorrow because I need to go back to the pen pimp. So I don't know if I want to do the cursive though this time. So this is another time that I have to decide what I want to do in my planner. What do I think is going to look nice? I've done a lot of cursive on this page already. So I don't know if doing a lot of cursive is something that I really want to make my layout look nice. I know I want to use the awesome lettering to make it stand out. But what exactly the lettering in, if it's all cursive in one area, it won't stand out because it's going to look the same. So I think I might do this kind of lettering. This is one of my favorites. I will be talking about it. Um, 
in a later lesson. This is really slightly more advanced because it is negative space lettering. A negative space lettering requires you to have enough of the muscle memory to have it not look hella awkward. Pen. Make sure I spell it right. The number of times at work especially where I've written the wrong thing and had to redo it. And I don't want to have to cover this up with washi or whatever because I just don't want to. I am too goddamn lazy to do that. So I will just try and get it right the first time. Now notice my letters aren't, you know, like the perfect fanciest. I don't care that much. As much as I want my planner to look pretty and I want to achieve planner fame by posting my gorgeous layouts every week, I don't really you know, want to fuss so much over it that it, I become neurotic. I have plenty of other things to be neurotic about. So there's Pen Pimp. I won't miss that. And then I might just add a little flourish just because it makes it stand out a little bit more. And again, it does make it look pretty and you can never achieve planner fame without having a pretty layout. So that's one way that I do it. And actually, sometimes I'll leave it like this. I've done that before where with those particular letters where I know they're in here somewhere where I've used them and I haven't colored them in that is not true I think I always nope there we go brand new week I didn't color that in and I thought it looks great but this but other times I've used them like here or here or here where I wanted to color them in have them look nice just because that's what I want to do so because this is a light purple layout, I'm going to use a light purple Tombow and I'm going to give it a quick test to make sure it's the, the color that I want. And I'm going to kind of color it in. I'm not going to color too heavy because the Tombows usually sit on top of the paper okay, but the more you layer onto it, the more they saturate the paper which means that they're going to bleed through. And luckily, since this is a Wednesday, any bleed through is going to happen on this week. But it's covered by that anyway, so no big. But anyway, so since it's covered by that, I think I might actually add a little bit of embellishment. Let me get my massive Tombow sets just so I can humble brag. Um, I love this set. If you're serious about markering, markering, is that even a word? That would be a good one to look at. They're water soluble, which means you can blend them with water. You can also, I a little inside drop shadow action here. Again, I'll go over these letters at a later date. But like I said, these are water soluble. You can blend them with your water brush. You can, if you have never seen a water brush before, this is a water brush. It's freaking rad. You, it's just a brush that you fill a water reservoir and you can watercolor without the mess. I love it. Anyway, you can blend your Tombows with that. You can also blend your Tombows with the colorless blender that comes with the Tombows. I don't like this one as much though. It's kind of fun to play with, but not really. Anyway, so that's one example of how I letter in my planner. I try and, same way you pick a sticker, you, you look at it and see what's going to be functional, but also what's going to look nice. Like you might, some of you might not decide that way, but like if I was going to use a page flag, for example, on this color of layout, I would try not to pick like a brown page flag or I don't know, a bright orange page flag. I would pick something that kind of goes with everything. And like, I do have some things like this, especially I love the music washi and I want it to kind of pop. So I don't forget what time my daughter's supposed to be there. But Often I try and pick something that at least coordinates with the rest of the set so it doesn't look too like out there. And it's the same with doing lettering in your planner. You want to look at it, see how you've done things, and see what you think is going to blend the best. Colors, styles, whatever. And incidentally, while I'm at it, I do have to admit my smugness at this little page flag. Oh, where the hell are they? Um, the little the little rectangular labels. Where are they? I can't find my sheet, so I'm just going to look over here. The ones that, this size, that people have been coloring to make watercolor labels. Snip it. 
make a flag. It's perfect. Okay, and my smugness. Okay, so that's one way to, to decide how you're going to letter. Another thing that I love to do in my lettering is to mix up the fonts. So for here, my friends are getting married this weekend, and I used this the serif fill-in kind of lettering, and then I added cursive. It's always fun to mix a cursive with a print because that always looks nice. It's also fun to mix different prints together. I usually like to add cursive in as like the... Um, the glue word like let me see if i've got a good example here you know i really should have researched this ahead of time well here's an example of the idea even if it's not cursive i got barbecue with joe yum yum so barbecue and joe were done in the serif lettering and then i did with and just basic ass printing but the with is the glue word it holds the more the more standout words together mom and rj time printing the printing and then add the the other words in to kind of pull it together that's another way to do it then here's just a mix of the art time for me you just want to practice once you get the hang of one kind of lettering skill use that to practice while learning another lettering skill then once you have both lettering skills mix those two skills up while you're practicing a third sooner or later you're going to have a huge repertoire of of things that you can use in your planner. I also use mine in art journaling and I'm just going to show you for a second because I think that it's kind of relevant. For example, this thing here, I'm going to give you the memory of a rainbow. I mix together regular printing, cursive, fancier printing, cursive, different fancy printing. You see how you can create a cool effect? Here's another good one. I love this quote. It's one of my favorites. But you see how it's all different styles. Once you have a bunch of different styles in your lettering, you can mix and match them and just test it out. And I mean, shit, it's your planner. Unless you're really trying to achieve planner fame and you have something that maybe doesn't make you so happy, whatever, dude. Like, who's going to care besides you? You're probably going to put it on on Instagram or on Facebook and be like, oh, whatever. Nobody's going to like this. And people are going to be like, oh, my God. Your lettering's so cool. Wherever did you learn it? And then you're going to say, well, Cindy at Llamas Love Lettering because she's the shit. Or whatever. So, like, you see, I even have my weeks where I just barely put anything out there because I could give a fuck, excuse my language, about what, um, what I have in my planner aside from the appointments I need. But here, look, I've got other times where I've used my lettering... And here, date night. Date night's a big one for me. So, all you need to do is practice seeing what looks interesting in your planner. You know? I'm really glad that I gave up on the color coding. It really is just not suiting me right now. Okay, sorry, memory lane. But you want, like I said, my favorite way to use it is to fill a box up. And look at this, I used a sticky note to embellish it. You could do that. A favorite thing of mine is deco tape, like these deco tapes. The decoration tape, I use it for date night. Oh, how'd that fuck up? Eh. Well, now you get an example of how to use it, because that fucked it up. Here we go. Good enough. Um, I like framing my words in deco tape, because washi often is really fat, but I don't have a lot of the skinny ones. So if you have skinny ones, go ahead and use that too. Anyway, just little doodles, little hearts I've got here. I don't even know. Every time I, you know, I've got deco tape here and a little bit of doodling. So, anyhow, have fun with it. Treat your lettering not as something you want to do on every square. I mean, you can. I try not to. I Like I said, I like to save my lettering for things I need to remember, like mail my car payment, damn it. And... And then it won't get old to you. And just continue to practice. Practice, 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 practice. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this bonus video. I will still be getting my other lesson up later this week. Um, I really appreciate everybody who watches. And I hope you are all having lots of fun. And like I said, if you have any ideas, please leave them in the comments. I have a new planner that I'm going to start using for my Llamas Love lettering specifically. It was going to be for my church ship, but... I think I can incorporate that into here, but it's my Webster's Pages Planner, and I'm starting to set that up for my business, 
my business, not really business, for my, for my side project of Llamas Love Lettering. So if you would like to see a setup video of this, let me know. I don't, I know there's shit tons of setup videos out there and I don't want to be the same fucking shit over and over again. God damn it. I'm cussing so much. Obviously I need some alcohol. Um, but if you would like to know how I set that up or my ginormous fat little dory, you just let me know. Okay. Anyway, have a lovely, lovely evening.